Gassing up mid-flight. It's an important job for the C-130T aircraft. But what happens when there is a significant modification to the aircraft and the Navy needs to refuel even more assets in the air? The Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division at Patuxent River Naval Air Station is leading the effort to enable the Navy's upgraded C-130T fleet to refuel a growing number of platforms. Up until recently, the Navy had been exclusively using these aircraft for cargo missions. They've begun the process to regain the capability to do aerial refueling across the Navy fleet. And recently, the C-130 fleet has begun to transform from the legacy four-bladed propeller to the more efficient eight-bladed design of the MP-2000 propeller. Prior to this testing, we only had a single aircraft that was cleared to be refueled on the KC-130T with the NP-2000 propellers, and that was the V-22. And that's very valuable, but we needed the rest of the aircraft in the Navy and Marine Corps inventory to be cleared in order to have the flexibility in any future fight or conflict that we may need it. The question is, how will the new propellers affect the refueling process for the different aircraft in the fleet? NOC AD engineers set out to answer that question by conducting tests with the EA-18 Growler and the CH-53K King Stallion. The data collected will be used to expand the number of aircraft that can be refueled by the C-130T even further. The internal to the pod, a refueling hose extends, so what we're testing is uh, what changes with the propeller uh, wake and, and how that affects the, the hose. Uh, able to hold my positioning well. So it took a lot of coordination with VX20, who is in charge of the KC-130 behind me, and also the F-18 squadron, because we had to coordinate our receiver aircraft and tanker aircraft. A big part of this test program also comes with the key collaboration between all of our air crew across all experience levels. So that includes our test pilots that are active duty, Navy and Marine Corps, as well as our contract and industry partner experts. The all hands on deck approach went swiftly and efficiently. From the time that we got the word to go start executing this to the time we actually executed was probably less than six weeks. So it was a very quick turnaround for us and required a lot of cooperation and coordination between different entities. If we look forward to any future fight, it's going to take intense collaboration between all the forces, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Army, Coast Guard. And as part of that, any resource that we have that can provide fuel airborne is going to be invaluable to all of the assets that are flying.